Grim Dawn 2023, the ultimate guide. What we're gonna cover here is everything that you need to know about Grim Dawn and all of its DLCs. Ashes of Malmut, Forgotten Gods, Crucible, Shattered Realms and everything that has to do with endgame content. So from the very start, from level 1 all the way to level 100 in order. Let's go! <laughs> very first question here is what to play on okay because there is a main campaign and there are difficulties on the main campaign there is normal normal veteran then once you're done with normal or normal veteran you unlock elite and then you unlock ultimate how to play for those that want the best balance action rpg ever okay then you're gonna play on a veteran and that's gonna be your run then you're gonna transfer to elite and then ultimate for those that want to reach ultimate difficulty as fast as they can, they're gonna play on normal only. So, there is a big difference. What do I recommend? Easier run to grab the ultimate or tougher run to grab the ultimate. If it's your first run, you should play on a veteran. Okay, because the game is mega fun. And you should do everything there is on a normal veteran before you unlock next difficulty levels. That's the first advice. The second advice is uh whether you should play crucible or not now when you play crucible you create a new character and then you want to start with a crucible there is a very easy way with crucible all you need to do is die in a crucible you collect yellow items equip your character then enter the main campaign fully equipped with yellow items and they have easy five devotion points to grab in a crucible it takes around an hour if not even less to grab five devotion points and great gear and then people are usually doing it and they enter yes okay that is all fine if you want to rush but i would recommend avoiding the crucible until you reach level 100 and then you can go one run into crucible to test your build see if you can finish it and get those achievements okay i would never recommend crucible from level one because it feels like cheating okay and uh the factor of fun in main campaign okay and the overall balance of the game all of that will be lost because you basically cheated with crucible before starting the main campaign so start the main campaign and don't play the crucible until you're level 100 that's the advice what is the goal the goal is to reach ultimate difficulty and to reach level 100 so you can reach the end game content kill celestial bosses that are the hardest ones in the game and test your might in shattered realms we're gonna talk about it later now let's go into the game so the very first thing that you need to do when you enter the game is go into the menu, go into the options menu and do the key bindings. Extremely important. Over here where it says pick up, there is going to be a lot of items in the game and you want to pick up all gear on one butt. Make sure to make some changes here, allocate the button you want to pick up items from, okay? So you don't need to click on every item with your mouse. It's going to save you a lot of nerves and a lot of time. The next thing that I will recommend. Every class has a movement ability. For example, Soldier has Blitz. While Oathkeeper, for example, has Vire's Might. How you do it? Play with one hand. Or you can always rush and do something else. I don't know, drink a coffee and charge into enemies. You hit them on a the left click. You cast your main damage output spell on a right click and you dash or in enemies or dash out of combat on mouse number four. On mouse number five, here on the side near thumb, you can go with key binding to drink a health potion. And that's how you can save your hand. Okay, it, it's a very long game. Okay, help me a lot, you know. I was playing like 80% of this game with one hand on me, right? And this is the way to do it. Now we're gonna go to Loot Filter. Loot Filter is on the bottom left, or better to say, you can just press O and Loot Filter will spawn. How to apply Loot Filter? All of this will be marked when you start. On level 5, you're gonna exclude common items once you reach level 5 or level 10. 
Once you reach level 20, level 30, you're gonna exclude magic items. Once you reach level 80, you're gonna exclude rare items. And you're gonna apply these settings, like you see them over here, and there's nothing else to do, basically. All items will be shown on a map. All of those items that are worth collecting. As you play, you will unlock a blacksmith. And every time when you reach a different city, there will be a new blacksmith. For example, blacksmith in Malmud, blacksmith in... Where is the homestead? Blacksmith in Fort Icon and so on and so forth. So, every blacksmith in this game is different. You see the passives down there? When you hover, where combine says, depends on a class you're playing. You need to check every blacksmith in the game and figure out what type of stats you want to apply on your gear. All right, pay attention on this thing when you play. Some blacksmiths for your build will be better on the, in homestead, some in Fort Tyka, some in Shattered Realms. Okay, in Forgotten Gods DLC main hub. So be careful and check what blacksmiths yield once you decide to craft items. Every main hub, every bigger city in Grim Dawn has your stash. Okay, this is how it looks like. When you collect yellow items, components, the easiest way to get them in your stash without clicking them separately would be on this item here. Okay, just move all components on the left and you save time like this. So use this button up. Should you unlock all stash tabs? Yes, you should. You should unlock on your character and another stash for all characters combined. Okay, this is how you get 12 stash tabs. There, it's extremely important. You need space. You need to accumulate items. There's a lot of great items in, in this game, no matter what class you play. And you can switch builds along the way. You can organize your build toward items and that's how you should always do you should never ever follow a single guide or a build with a specific type of item needed and specific skills needed to play the game play the game your own way play with what you find this is probably the most important advice in grim dawn every class is balanced every multi-class is balanced and everything works it's just a matter of question of what item you wear okay so what is basically the trick now with devotion points and so on? Uh, when it's, for example, I got here a fire weapon. And now if we're gonna go to devotion and we zoom out and now you say, oh, look how big it is. I, I don't know what to play here. But you play with fire weapon. Yeah, you type fire and the red dots will appear. This is where you need to go. Hover over, see what they give. They give Flat fire damage, burn damage, they give flat fire damage again, percentage for fire damage, and so on. Okay, you want to be a bit tankier, type resist, red dots will appear for resist. Okay, you don't need a build or a guide, just figure out from your items what you want to play. What you're missing, for example, you miss Ether resist, alright? Okay, you miss Ether Resist and you got great items now. You go here, you type Ether, find Ether Resist. Look how many red dots there are. Find somewhere where is Ether Resist. For example, target the Builder, 8% Ether Resist. Apply. It's not hard, as long as you type what you need in Devotion, your problem is solved. I'm not here to show you a specific build. I'm here to show you how to play the game, so you can actually learn how to play the proper way. So as far as the stash go, unlock all tabs. As soon as you got money, unlock all tabs. Organize your inventory, organize your stash. Have your belts on one tab. Have your armors on the second tab. Have your gloves and boots on the third one. It's easier to navigate and it looks great. And everything is tidy and clean, you'll have more will to play. Also, what I would also recommend, these purple items, don't put them in a stash, carry them with you. Okay, they don't occupy way too much inventory space, okay, and once you have a loot filter on, you'll have plenty of space in these inventory bags on the side. So just carry these purple items with you. Do not make a mess out of your stash, because your stash is more important than your inventory slots, alright? way much more important. 
what you should keep now in your inventory as far as items go. Only extremely good items, something that's extremely valuable, or better to say, item level 94. That's the highest level items that you can grab when you see good stats, okay, when they're old well, with plenty of stats, that's the items you want to keep, because you might decide to switch the build along the way, you know, you'll merge boots with gloves and with helmet, and then now you want to switch. Just collect extremely good items. Do not pile up items, green items and so on. Don't do it. Okay, don't pile them up. There is no need. The most important question now is whether you should play with a ranged character or with a melee character and what's easier. It's always easier to play with ranged because you can kite enemies. Okay, and you can play with like two or three move skills, okay, TPs, charges, rushes, dashes, and so on, and you can kite enemies easily. When you play as a melee, it's a different story. Then you need to pay attention on every single stat in the game. Now, speaking about stats. As ranged, your most important stats are offensive ability and resist. As melee, your most important stat is armor rating and defensive ability. That's how it is. You're gonna get one shot in as a melee if you don't have these numbers up, okay? These numbers, they need to go up. Also, never forget to trigger all of your passive abilities, so these numbers will go even higher, okay? Don't forget to do it every time when you enter the game. That's extremely important. Every, absolutely every single class in a game has passive abilities. Those that reserve energy, or better to say they reserve mana. Okay, don't forget to trigger them when you enter the game. So let's start with physique, cunning and spirit. Depends what you play, what class you play, but these are the most important stats, attributes. How you should allocate them. Basically, while you level up, okay, on level 20, 30, and now if you can carry armor and you got requirements, okay, like it requires a hundred physique, don't ramp up physique, keep those points, because you might find an armor that requires spirit and now you won't have attribute points then you'll need to reset you'll need to pay okay to respec don't do it as long as you can carry items keep attribute points once you reach level 100 when you want to optimize your build that's when you're gonna invest all of your attribute points into specific stat that you'll actually need in order to carry all the gear that you equipped so don't rush with spending your attribute points. Playing as a melee, you reach level 100. You need to have 20k HP. It's a must or you will get one shot. Playing as a melee, you need huge defensive ability and even bigger armor rating if you don't want to get one shot. Ideal armor rating is around 4k. You can tank celestial bosses on ultimate with 4,000 armor. You're gonna get one shot it as a melee with 3,000 armor. Like this. You're gonna get deleted with 3,000 armor as a melee. As a range, you can always kite and life steal back and you don't care that much about defense. It's all you care about the resists as ranged. Now, speaking about resists, resists need to be maxed out on normal. They need to overcap. You see this over maximum? They need to overcap by 20% every resist. Needs to be overcapped by 20% on elite difficulty. And once you decide to play on the ultimate difficulty, minimum overcap on every single stat in the game needs to be 50 above. 50% above. Because a lot of mobs, a lot of bosses, especially celestial bosses, will nuke down your resists and you're gonna get one shot it. Okay, but when you are over capping by 50%, 100% per element, okay, you won't get one shot it because again, these stats will go up. And now, speaking about going up, we also have those max resists. Max resists, you can extract some out of devotion. Okay, just type max resist, you'll see where you can apply. And some max resists are with amulets and rings and other gear. It's extremely important. Okay, maximum to all resists is extremely important. Above, I would say 85 and above is a must for the ultimate, especially if you want to fight celestial bosses and reach further into the Shattered Realm. Shattered Realm is that definitive endgame 
you need those resists. That's the bottom line. So, as I said, again, normal, keep them maxed. Elite, 20% over maximum. Ultimate, minimum, 50% over maximum and you're good to go. How do we do it? How do we keep those resists over maximum? We keep them with augments and with components. Okay, some components you can craft a blacksmith this would be components yellow stuff okay some give pierce some give bleed resist and so on and so forth and some of these augments as well they give flat resists you want to ramp up every single item with those components and with augments if you want to overcap like i overcap over here all right you just need to do it every city in the game has different uh, augments to sell in order to buy them you need reputation it sounds complicated when i say it like this but, but it ain't basically as long as you do side quests and main quest and kill enemy elites reputation will rise as you unlock reputation the more reputation you got the better items you can buy in every main faction in cities and at the end you will want definitely augments of level 90 and above in your gear that's what you'll get on ultimate so don't forget to apply components and don't forget to apply augments on every single piece of gear that you have do not be afraid to apply as well because you're gonna have a lot of them so don't don't conserve your components and everything okay waste them spam on items you'll get stronger when you switch you can keep some components if you go with uh if you go with the inventor here you can keep an item or you can keep an add-on you can dismantle for additional components all the items that you don't need but then you need dynamite for it and you can transmute transmute you can usually you should transmute sets so when you transmute a set item for example you pick a helmet over here and transmute you're gonna get an arm when you transmute an armor you're gonna get boots and so on okay so you can accumulate a full set if you want to play with sets so that's what inventor does now as far as this guy goes illusionist these are cosmetics only okay not like in Diablo cosmetics where you have a shop and you need to buy. What you find in the game is how you can change your looks. Okay, and there's quite a lot to do with all of the gear that you see. You can switch, create your character how you want him to look like. When you should do it, on a level 100. Not before that because you're gonna switch items non-stop and there is no need to waste currency. So once you're level 100, that's when you want to use Illusionist, not before that. Okay, as long as you switch gear, do not use it. The main question is now, when you should multi-class and how you should multi-class? First of all, every single class combines well with every single class. You want Soldier with, I don't know what, with Demolitionist, it goes. You want Oathkeeper with Demolitionist, it goes. You want Oathkeeper with Occultist, it goes. You want Occultist with Soldier, it goes. You want Soldier with Oathkeeper, it goes well. So every single multi-class is valid. But when you should multi-class, you should pick your main class. For example, I wanted to play here as an Oathkeeper. And I went all the way in, maxed him out to 50, picked the ultimate spell, maxed it out, and then... I started multi-classing with a soldier. Okay, so your main skills should be from the class that you picked with his ulti and with his spells. Okay, no matter what class you pick. And the second class that you are multi-classing with is usually a support class where you want passive abilities out of that support class to enhance your abilities of your main class. And that's why it's called multi-classing. So again, stick I would say to level 50, level 60 with one class and then in the middle of your elite run you can start upgrading into some other class and once you get on the ultimate you'll have everything ready. Especially on level 90 plus or so. 
Now, I was speaking about the reputation, how you need to do quests and so on. Why you also need to do quests? Not only because of reputation, okay, where you're gonna unlock new items and new shit to buy and upgrade and so on, augments, components and whatnot, rewards. You need to do every single side quest and main quest in this game, including the DLCs, including the Shattered Realm and game content if you want to receive additional skill points and additional attribute points. Attribute points, are physique, cunning and spirit. Skill points, they go into the skill tree over here and you need to do them normal, on elite and on ultimate to accumulate as much as those skill points as you can, whether to say all of them. That's how the game is. Do not ignore side quests. They bring good rewards, good components, good augment skill points, Inventory bags, attribute points. Do not ignore side quests in Grim Dawn. Devotion. When you find devotion shrines, you get a devotion point. Maximum amount of devotion points is 55. Should you search for every single devotion shrine in the game? No. You need around 30 on normal difficulty. And once you reach elite, not ultimate, elite, you will have 55 unlock as they repeat. Okay, so you don't need to worry about There's like a normal elite and ultimate, you got around 200 devotion shrines and only 55 count. So you're gonna get 55 as you play. So do not rush, do not worry. If you miss something, you're gonna get it along the way. No matter when it happens, it's gonna. For the one last time, how do we use devotion points? It depends what class you play. I already explained and I'll say it again. What you need is what you go for. If you play with melee, you wanna raise armor, you search for red dots. If your melee is armor with poison, you're gonna combine those red armor dots with poison dots. Okay, what's the trick? You see how you start with devotion and you usually start, you need to start from here in order to unlock. Later on, you can respec, okay, and you can remove points from here and only keep constellation points, so that's also a trick. Once you accumulate like 20, 30 devotions and you get like two or three of them ready. And when you get constellation bonus completed here to three, you can easily remove points from here, and put them somewhere else when it, where it actually matters. That's the trick. How do we remove devotion points? There are two ways. First way would be with a tonic of clarity. I recommend doing it when you want to completely reset all of your devotions when you're level 100. Do not use tonic of clarity before you're level 100 and before you decide what build you want to play. There is the other way as well. You see this small book over here where it says spirit guide. This is where you can remove point by point but it costs iron bits and it costs crystals okay so my personal advice is play the game how you want it okay do not rush reach level 100 then do everything in detail be smart when you upgrading stuff and always follow your gear to complement everything with devotion points do not complement devotion points with gear First you do the gear and then you do devotion, not the other way around because you're going to fuck it up. So allocate devotion points by your gear. That's the most important thing basically. If you miss damage, you're going to search for damage in devotion. If you miss armor, you're search for armor. If you miss, I don't know what, bleed resist, you're going to search for bleed resist. You want to overcap, you're going to search for this augments on gear and for bleed resist in devotion okay do not forget to apply special effects on your skills from devotion some of these constellations have those special effects all you need to do is click over here and pick the skills that you want to use okay for the constellation very simple they usually auto trigger very few of them are triggered manually most of them are auto trigger on attack or so on when you click a skill it applies a specific add-on on the skill. Famous question, do I need to finish the game once or not? Man, when you finish a normal, that's tutorial. When you finish an elite, you're getting ready. And the real game starts on ultimate. So yes, 
this is the game that you need to finish three times if you want to see everything there is in a game ultimate is the way to go you unlock the highest level gear with amazing stats with amazing outlooks with great hidden areas and bosses and hidden quests and whatnot ultimate is the way to go the entire new game opens up on ultimate i think i made myself clear there no normal campaign is a joke it's not enough it's a good introduction to the game also one more very important advice escape options menu gameplay auto loot material stick it on so you can auto pick up all components potions and all of those items that don't occupy way too much space in your inventory you just run over them and your hero will collect them don't forget to do it now uh stats and what matters i already said how most important stat for range would be resists and offensive ability as well as crit chance and so on on a uh, tab 2 over here where you can check them out and whatnot on a melee there is one very important stat that you need to pay attention to. On a tab 3, all of these resists are quite important for the ultimate, and one of the most important ones would be slow, freeze, and petrify resists. It's extremely important as the melee. If you get slowed, petrified, and so on, you're fucked and you're dead. As range, you can always TP out and continue kiting enemies. As melee, you're dead. That's how the game is. Do not underestimate physical resist as well, as well as disruption resist. So you need those stats as a melee. As a melee, it's a slightly harder game than when playing with ranged, so have that in mind. For the detailed stats and how much your skills deal damage on a tab number 2, you can see your stat for, for your character okay if you use i don't know what for basic attack i don't know what for a secondary attack it depends out of the class but you can see exactly the numbers and the damage that you deal per second on tab number two is it better to have health regen or lifesteal or ranged it's lifesteal for tanks melees it's health regen per second then about it do not forget that every blue or purple item has a specific skill so apply it on your tab right click on tab over here and apply the skill that you want to use on a specific number there's a lot of great skills on items do not miss them out one million bucks question should you use mods for grimdon no you should never use mods on your first run should you use mods once you finish vanilla developer's version of Grim Dawn on Ultimate Difficulty? You reach level 100, see the Shattered Realm, see some Celestial bosses and so on. You do the hardest content available basically in the game. That's when you want to use mods. Start using mods then. But please, if it's your first run, do not ruin Grim Dawn with mods. There are brilliant mods for Grim Dawn, but don't do it. There is time for you to use mods if you like the game that much. Play the vanilla first. How do we farm items? Well, this is a topic that, that takes some time to explain, but Grim Dawn has Diablo 2 like itemization and loot drop. So, for example, in Broken Hills, if a good armor dropped and that armor is named, you're level 30 now, and that armor is named divine steel halberd the same mythical divine steel halberd will drop on exactly the same spot on a map once you're level 90 to 100 what's the difference one on normal will be uh, only divine steel halberd then it's gonna be epic on elite divine steel halberd and then on level 90 to 100 is gonna be mythical it's always gonna drop on specific spots so when you find some purple item that you like and you say hey i want to use this mythical final stuff for my build open up the stupid map and see the area where it dropped if it dropped i don't know where uh, in saros bastion that's the area that you want to farm your final stuff okay so every item can only be dropped from a specific monster or on a specific spot or from a specific chest in the game that's how the loot system is 
so pay attention to what item drops where. I wish someone told me this before I started and before I learned it, because it took some time for me to realize that. So what would be my run for equipping gear on on Oathkeeper? Because I want, you know, plus one to all skills in Oathkeeper. So all skills go plus one. Okay, when the light blue like this, it means it's plus one, plus two, plus three, and so on. Uh, what was my route? My route on the map was usually... Ah, uh, Morndale. Okay, this is where I got my weapon. And my augments mostly came out of the Broken Hill dungeons. Okay. And the best gear that I could find were on... Uh, Tonian Rifts. Red portals in the game, you'll see them when you play. That's, for example, for the old Keeper. When you play some other build, your items can drop on some other spot. So this is why it's good to play on normal. And you kind of remember what item drop where. You don't want to memorize what item drop where. Take a notebook and write it down. Okay, my rifle, you play as ranged. And you say, my rifle dropped at Atarkan Road Rift. Write it down. Once you start an ultimate, arm the Road Rift. And you're gonna get a mythical set height, the one you need for your build. And then you accommodate your devotion points towards the items that you are carrying. That's how you should play the game. What's the other way of farming items? The other way is to Crucible DLT, the arena, enemies coming up in waves, you clear them, you get loot. If you don't wanna play the Crucible, there is Shattered Realms that you can play. In the Forgotten Gods DLC. Again, it uh, works like Greater Rifts in Diablo 3, Shattered Realm. And the best way by far would be with totems. Totem farm is absolutely the best. Now I'm gonna show you how you should farm totems. Basically, what you should do, you try to find totems from the location of the portal. So now I wanna find the totem, okay? Let's transfer to Infernal Wastes. See if we can find totem immediately. You open up the map, there is no totem. You move slightly back and we're gonna find a totem in, I don't know where, in, let's try in Corvan Plateau. You're gonna switch a few portals until you see a totem spawn, okay? They usually spawn close by. There you go, you just spawned, Savage Totem. This is the way how you can farm. You go to Savage Totem, you farm it up, collect all items, you return back, you click on the local map again, go to the world map, and then you go, I don't know where, you go to the... go to the Dead Man's Gulch. Okay, you enter the map, you check if there is, there is not, you go somewhere else. And that's how you search for totems. It's fast, you can easily find like 15 totems in 15 minutes. And that's a lot of gear. If you ask me, it pays off more than Shattered Realm, it pays off more than the Crucible. And you farm items faster and very good loot can drop out of the totems. What is also the way? Dungeons. Dungeons that you can unlock only with a skeleton key. When you should play them? On every single difficulty. Why you should play them? Because they bring a lot of good loot. Should you run them as the end game content? Yes, you should. What is the best skeletal dungeon in the game? The best skeletal dungeon in the game would be in the Arkovia sector. The other one would be in Ugdenbug, uh, Ashes of Malmud DLC, south of Ugdenbug portal, Ancient Grove. This is where the dungeon is. Okay, those two skeletal dungeons are by far the best dungeons that you can play with the best loot. The hardest by far is in the Forgotten Gods DLC dungeon, and that would be the Tomb of the Heretic. Yet, you get extremely great loot out of it, but this is, you, you need like very good endgame build if you want to play this dungeon as the endgame content. What is the mega endgame content? It's Celestial bosses. Celestial bosses are completely broken. They're far easier to kill with range than with melee. If you want to kill them with melee, do not even think about it without 4000 armor and overcapping your resists on 50% and above. They're like the ultimate challenge in the game. Celestial bosses. 
how you find them. You got plenty of guides on the internet of how to unlock celestial bosses, because all of them are hidden in the game. Very well hidden, and some of them take like a hundred hours to unlock. What is also the part of endgame content is the Shattered Realms. As I said, great rifts in Diablo 3, aka Shattered Realms, Forgotten Gods in the DLC. All you need to do is trigger them from the Conclave of the Tree. Very easy, in the middle of the map. Now, a lot of people will probably advise you to rotate the camera while you play in order to spot hidden items and what you can loot and whatnot. I completely disagree with it. How you find loot? You find your perfect angle. For example, this is your perfect angle to play. Alright. You click where you want to move and you hover with your mouse. As you hover with your mouse, like this, by the edges and so on, you're gonna spot hidden items, you're gonna spot walls and whatnot. You don't need to look at it that much, okay? Because uh, you see how it goes in the uh, top middle, okay? When you hover over anything, there is. You see? If there was a hidden wall, it would be detected. Just watch the letters up there. When they spawn, as you move, you do this with your mouse. This is how you detect instead of turning the camera left and right. It takes some time to get used to it only, but you won't miss a thing and you're gonna waste less time basically when you play chaotically like this than when you rotate and zoom in and look if you can loot or not if you can enter or not okay now uh, i said hidden doors hidden items and so on there's a lot how you should play grim dawn you <laughs> hug the wall and you check in every dungeon every wall that exists there's a lot of hidden loot hidden stashes corpses what not hidden bosses hidden elites you just need to check every corner of the map everywhere that you can think of there are side roads there, there's hidden walls you can go under the waterfall you can open up a hidden staircase i don't know what okay that, every map is full with secrets absolutely every map in grim dawn is plagued with secrets okay for example all of this is a secret over here on the map believe it or not so play don't just run past something, okay? Double check, triple check. Everything that you think is suspicious, there's probably something hidden there. Grim Dawn probably has the biggest amount of secrets in the action RPG history. And there's a lot of good secrets in the game as well. One more thing I want to talk about are blueprints. You will find a lot of blueprints in the game. You can buy them with enough reputation from traders in every city. They're gonna drop from totems, they're gonna drop from monsters, they're gonna drop from bosses. Anyways, you're gonna find a lot of notes like this that are called blueprints. All you need to do is right click on them and you learn them. Why you need to learn them immediately as you find them? Because duplicates cannot drop in a game. Okay, and when you learn a blueprint immediately, the next blueprint that drops will be a blueprint that you don't have. Okay, so you won't accumulate duplicates. What it means? It means that your blacksmith can craft huge amount of items, okay, without duplicates. So learn those blueprints immediately. That would be the advice, all right? There's a lot of blueprints in a game and you can craft a lot of good items out of the blueprints. Now, as you play, you're gonna spot potions. Potions that enhance your maximum fire resist, maximum cold, poison and whatnot. When do you use potions? Only before fighting a celestial. Potions are completely useless in normal, elite, ultimate difficulty on elites, on nemesis bosses, on during the campaign, during shattered realms. They're useless. You should keep those potions and apply them all before fighting a celestial boss. That's what the potions are for in the game. Relics. I know you want to have a level 90 relic, but in order to have a level 90 relic for some classes, you easily need to farm for over 100 hours if you want to craft a level 90 relic. So have that in mind, do not waste time. Be patient, it's gonna come if you spend a hundred hours in a game. You need blueprints, you need materials, you need specific gear and whatnot in order to craft the best possible relic for your class. 
do not forget to buy and equip a glyph on your medal. Okay, that's also very important. Anyways, the bottom line is play the game your own way. Do not follow specific builds. Play and learn as you play. Equip an item, then put your skills, your attributes and your devotion points towards the item that you want to carry. Do not even bother of adjusting your build until you reach level 95 plus or better to say level 100. Do not even bother. Finish the game on normal, on elite, on ultimate and then start creating your perfect build. Again, do it by your items, not by your skills. If you do the skills and then you search for an item, it's gonna take forever. The other way around. Because this game, this game will drop plenty of great items for you and then accommodate your build toward all the gear that you found. It's very easy. Build diversity per class is huge. You can play every single class in like five different ways and now you add multi-class and multiply that with nine classes in a game. Imagine the number. I would say there's easily around 300 builds in a game. And what is the most important thing? Every single build is valid. That's Grimdio. Perfectly balanced action RPG. Once you finish all the content, you can check out mods for Grimdion, but first, finish developer's vanilla version of Grimdion. I hope that you found this guide useful. If you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll be seeing you on the next one. Thanks for watching.